Hello, this is your instructor, Ann Babson. I am making this video to prepare you for the final exam, which will, you will find this out repeatedly in this video so there can be no possible confusion. The final exam will happen on Monday, May 11th from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. There will not be a window as there were in other exams for you to uh, take it. You must take it beginning at 8 a.m. I want to help you get ready. Um, there are a number of things I can do to help you. There are a number of things I cannot do to help you, but you can help each other. I want to set you up for success here. So here is my video filled with information and advice. Here are the most basic pieces of information about the exam. The exam will take place on Monday, May 11th from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. There is no window. You must take it in that two hour period. The exam will take place on Moodle. There will be a tab after this week's tab. Uh, our, we are in week 16 as I send out this uh, video to you. Um, it will say something like, uh, take your final exam here as the tab header, something to that effect. Uh, click on that tab and you will see further instructions. There will be nothing on that tab, but that particular exam. It will be a two hour essay exam. Um, if you hear sounds like planes or birds, I'm sitting outside in my outdoor socially distanced office, um, <laughs> AKA my patio. Um, it's a two hour essay exam. Be prepared to write at least five paragraphs. You've been doing this. Every essay I have asked you to do during the test was at least five paragraphs. Uh, you'll have two hours, not an hour and 15 minutes. The exam will be in MLA format. It will be an open book exam. Uh, apart from the practical uh, challenges of preventing students uh, from looking at uh, readings uh, when they are taking an exam at a distance, the truth is that this exam has always been designed for students in the proficiency uh, process as an open book exam. Here is no exception. During this exam, you must cite at least two different sources within the readings you've been given to use uh, in parenthetical in-text citation in MLA format. By now, it would behoove you based on the amount of badgering and intimidation I have used to get you to learn parenthetical in-text citation in MLA format. You must know by now that this course's uh, syllabus, uh, I, my department, and the university itself urge we all urge you in concert to really get this down. Parenthetical in-text citation in MLA format. The essay must be organized. Remember, I've been asking you to do outlines. The essay must be organized and it must have a clear thesis. Remember our various brief thesis conferences in class and then my repeated requests to see a thesis sent to me. Uh, a clear thesis statement supported by evidence from the readings. I have my first pit, bit of advice. Even if the exam question really relates to your personal life, do not drift off for more than two or three sentences tops to explain how this relates to your life. Stick to the readings. You're being evaluated on your ability to use things you have read in an essay exam that are properly cited as evidence for why a thesis statement is valid. So it should, and it should be about the readings that you are finding your evidence. It is fine to briefly, briefly mention 
the relationship between the subject and you if it is indeed at all relevant to you personally but you're being ex given this exam to determine your ability to use the readings uh, the essay must be organized i said clear thesis evidence for the readings and it should end with a summary conclusion paragraph each of your body paragraphs should bring up another point in your argument and uh, it should uh, end with a summary conclusion paragraph you don't need to make a work cited page don't even bother with it don't worry about it just let that be I want to give you another piece of information one student asked me last week it's a valid question if there would be a portfolio because my goodness everybody who has ever taken this class before you has talked about the portfolio the portfolio the portfolio at the beginning of the semester i did as well but we are not having a portfolio for the obvious reason that you cannot hand me a portfolio and other uh, graders cannot review the portfolio in the manner that we typically use because uh, under the circumstances of the pandemic and our social distancing, you cannot create such a portfolio for us. You have been turning in papers to me via uh, Moodle uh, throughout the semester, even before we had a pandemic. Those electronic sources are and my comments to you are um, they constitute the record of your writing uh, related to the assessment that we generally like to do so what would have been your physical portfolio is now an electronic portfolio which by turning in your papers you have effectively turned in to me along with the final exam which will be the last product in the understanding of your progress in the course here are the texts that you need for your open book exam it's open book here are the books basically in your textbook that we almost never cracked open cross currents and composition you will need chapter 15 all the readings come from chapter 15. you will notice I know that for a number of you, you have been perplexed by uh, the references to things like politics and um, the things that you have been uh, asked to write about. Well, guess what? The subject here is not unlike what you have been asked to write about and think about all semester. That actually works out in your favor because you may have had more practice than another student who say, who had a professor who wanted you to read about I don't know botany poetry things that might be of interest in some other way what a coincidence that you have some sensibility of what might be a subject that could come up generally from your work in this class you will need the little brown handbook so that you are using correct formatting for both parenthetical and text citation in MLA and the exam itself um in the event that you don't have either of these texts in a hard copy it one student had to move out of the dorm in a hurry and seems to have left behind her cross currents and little brown handbook well there are online sources for both i recommend actually and it, maybe i'm just kicking it old school because you have figured out i am literally og <laughs> or at least i'm old <laughs> compared to you um you want to uh if you need the text and you don't have the physical copy of the book uh you can download uh the chapter and pdf form from the english 102 departmental exam of portfolio review course that you have on moodle and uh if you simply don't have the little brown handbook you can download the information you need about mla from the purdue l website don't try to do either of these things on the day of the exam do them like when you're watching this video now um, and you'll need a dictionary because spelling does count on this exam um, electronically you will need some things on this exam as well you need to have a computer that is wired to the internet or with a very very reliable connection um, that's uh, Wi-Fi if that's at all possible 
Um, you absolutely need to have that. Uh, you need to have a downloaded copy of Microsoft Word. We've talked about this all semester. You get it for free. It needs to be downloaded and installed on your computer so that you can type out your essay answer in Microsoft Word. Do not type this essay into the cloud. Type it into a Microsoft Word document that will reside on your computer from the moment it begins. Why do you have to have a Microsoft Word document? Why would I do that to you? Well, there is a reason. Uh, in case Moodle crashes or your computer does. Uh, for all of us in the English department uh, who had students at, taking uh, exams at approximately, approximately the same uh, time when you took your exam three, there were a variety of tornado warnings um, uh, in uh, northern Louisiana some of you were affected and had to seek shelter. Of course, you can't take an exam in the middle of a tornado warning. Duh, uh, of course. That said, uh, others of you had power outages. Uh, it became impossible to respect the window of time. I was able to extend uh, the opening for those students who were specifically affected in that manner. Um, this is not like that. The whole department, the whole English department of 102 students is taking the exam at the exact same minute. All the 101 students, I believe, are also taking the exam at the exact same minute. We are assured by the people who run Moodle that it is unsinkable like the Titanic and will not sink. It will not hit an iceberg and go down off of Nova Scotia. It will not. In case they're wrong, just in case, we want you to have a document, a copy of your exam, because it would be a giant mess for the administration of this course if you did not complete the exam by the end of the exam period. Uh, that would just be... Uh, you know, a, a bad thing. I would look like the women in these pictures. And so would my boss, and probably so would my boss's boss. Hundreds of students will be sitting for the English 102 final exam at the exact same time. That's quite a lot of pressure on Moodle all at once. It's like we all uh, jump on top of the roof as hard as we can, and we're, you know, a large choir of singers jumping on top of a roof, we could fall through the roof. Sometimes also there are tornado warnings. Uh, sometimes bad things happen that we don't predict of another nature. We are assured by the people who run Moodle that it will work, but let's be honest, uh, they can't predict everything, neither can we, and we would rather you were safe and would have this insurance, and so would we, that you had taken the exam through uh, a computer that was connected to the internet um, and that was working properly and that you had a preserved document no matter what else happens. So that if we have to scramble to salvage your exam, we can do so that matters to us and I imagine it matters to you. Assume there are no makeup exams for this final. There are very strict standards. Let me tell you the occasions that would allow me to offer you an incomplete for the semester and a makeup exam. You are hospitalized. You personally are in the hospital, of course. Uh, you are in jail. I hope that there is no reason to arrest you, but cops can sometimes arrest people. Uh, if you are in jail and you could document this, I can do this. I can give you uh, an incomplete for the semester and a makeup exam. Uh, your military orders have suddenly called you to war 
with North Korea. And you are shipping out before 8 a.m. on Monday. Of course, you know, Godspeed. And when you get back, you'll have the incomplete to, uh, to, to make up. Barring those kinds of radical problems where you are absolutely prevented from taking the exam, there are no makeup exams for this exam. You have to be taking it at 8 a.m. in the manner that I have discussed with you here. I cannot stress this enough. Do not even think about taking this exam on your phone. I am not of your generation. I do not try to do everything through my phone the way that some of you do. This is not a thing, however old or young you are, or however much you like your phone, or however new and fabulous it is that you want to do with your phone. There is too much at stake for you here related to your success at the university for you to do this casually on your phone. So let me talk to you briefly about how this exam is different than taking the Moodle exam uh, that you took last week, exam three. Everybody basically took it last week. Um, you have a set time. You have to take it. You cannot change the time. Again, that time is Monday, uh, May 11th at 8 a.m. There isn't another time you can take it. The exam is two hours long. Block off those two hours. You will need to be available without interruption between 8 a.m. and 2 a.m. I'm sorry, 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. I beg your pardon. We are asking you to cut and paste your answer from the Word document into the answer box provided on Moodle for the exam, assuming, as we all wish to, that everything is going really well. We want you to just cut and paste it. Save your document for your own records and cut and paste it into the Moodle exam. In the very unlikely event that Moodle would crash, you can email me your saved Word document for your exam uh, answer before 10 a.m. Uh, that would be the total backup. Um, I am assuming at this moment that tornadoes hitting your house uh, would be far less likely than Moodle crashing. Let's hope that neither of those things happens. But that is the process. You will write this in a document. You will paste it into the box. If you then, then hit submit for your answer, um, if for something, some reason something went wrong with the exam, you wouldn't lose the answer. You would have it in a document form. Um, so given that you have all the information about the physical taking of the exam, the actual process involved, let me now talk to you about studying for the exam. Uh, what is it that you need to do to get ready for? Again, I am telling you the time. I am a broken record here. Monday, May 11th at 8 a.m. That is a time. First, and I would do this as soon as you finish watching this video, read the chapter from Cross Currents very carefully. Don't just read it passively the way you might watch a reality TV show. Take notes and recognize what these readings have in common and what divides them. Consider what themes they share. Do any of them ask similar questions? Remember, we're looking for a way to frame a question for, for our students when we look at these chapters where we could imagine uh, an exam question that would challenge them. Um, one thing I will say about the exam questions that I perhaps should have said earlier, you will have a choice between two exam questions. Only answer one of the two exam questions. Don't try to combine them. Pick one, answer one. Imagine that the one you have not picked doesn't exist anymore. 
Um, but if a, a work seems to be all about some issue and another work shares a similar concern that is somehow related to that issue, maybe those two uh, exam readings might be useful to you if you were asked a question that's somehow related to the issue. You won't know in advance what the question is, but you will know that you are going to have to talk about at least two of the readings within the chapter, within your exam answer. Uh, if you're working hard copy, I would use post-its to mark notable passages uh, so that you could maybe find a quotation in them. If you possibly can, by Monday night, read the chapters, rather the chapters readings, read the whole thing. If you possibly can, at least for the first time through, you're going to probably want to read it more than once. Um, discuss the readings with others would be the second step. Uh, you can't form a physical brick and mortar study group exactly, but I have facilitated this uh, by creating a two forums that'll be count toward your participation grade where I will not be so much evaluating your answer as providing an opportunity for you to discuss very broadly two questions I'm asking you to consider about the readings. I suggest that you take full advantage of these. Uh, I suggest that you spend some time um, talking to each other in a fairly freeform manner, the way that you might uh, on social media uh, about the exam questions. Um, uh, you can perhaps consider having a virtual um, uh, study group. Uh, I believe that just as I have access to Google Meet, I, I'm called into administrative meetings through Google Meet. Um, I believe that students can use that resource on their Gmail accounts through the university. You could set one up through each other's emails on uh, the university email uh, server and you could all get together at a set time where you talk about it more face to face through video cameras. Um, the one person you cannot ask about the readings themselves is me. Uh, the reason why you can't is pretty basic. I'm not allowed to, neither are the professors of your, of your uh, brother and sister students. Um, talk to each other instead. Uh, this will sound lame. I apologize if, this, if you feel this is at all condescending. I would benefit from this advice were I in your shoes right now in the middle of this pandemic. Set an alarm for Monday morning. I don't know what your schedule has been like since we all got uh, quarantined, but I find myself sleeping at odd hours. I find it very hard to be awake at certain hours and I find myself awake in the middle of the night uh, because there's less structure around me. Perhaps that is the case for some of you. Since you must take the exam again on Monday, May 11th, at 8 a.m. Make sure you are awake well in advance of that moment so that you can be fully awake and ready to take said exam. I know that sounds dorky. I don't mean to condescend to you. I would need that advice. Uh, another thought, final thought. Everything you have done in this class has prepared you for this. You have had to write essay exams very much like this one in terms of its structure. And the major writing assignments I gave you asked you to consider broadly questions that are rather like the issues raised uh, in the chapter. Not exactly like them. I haven't in any way prepared you in some cheatish, cheating way. Uh, but I have uh, required you to consider some political questions. Look at the to topic in the chapter header. Uh, so apart from the fact that I think political questions govern a lot in our lives, I actually think that that helps you here. And then you already know that one of the ways you're gonna be judged is your ability to organize uh, things in this, in this exam. And I've always asked you to write outlines for your exams. So I'm reasonably, uh, confident that you will think about the organization for this exam. 
Uh, you know that MLA exams have headers. You know, my name, your name, or rather your name, my name, class name uh, assignments. They also have titles. I didn't put that down here. In other words, you don't call the exam final exam. You call it something related to the subject matter that you skip lines and you involve, uh, you do parenthetical in-text citations and MLA. And, and the last point is you have survived me. And I am not the easiest professor, but the reason that I take the extra effort myself to be kind of hard-nosed with my students is that it prepares you for this moment because other professors who are sweet and give their students a lot of happy talk about how great everything's going to be tend to prepare their students uh, insufficiently in my personal view for the challenges of English 102, the expectations of standards met. You have noticed that I can be very exacting about certain standards and I uh, think that I have served you well. You are free to think what you like. But the fact is by this juncture in the class, you have actually survived me. You have survived a semester under my instruction for better or for worse. What can this exam do to you, frankly, if you had to deal with me? I'm saying that everything up until now in this course has prepared you to exceed here, to succeed here. Um, there is no need to have a sort of pointy headed haircut like this young man, uh, quarantine haircuts notwithstanding. Um, but I do imagine you sitting uh, barefoot while you take the exam. And I hope that you have a similar uh, pleased expression on your face when you get your grade on the exam. Um, if I can answer questions about the structure and requirements of the exam, I will gladly do so via email. As far as the content of the readings, Godspeed, it's all on you.